Hello, bit of a different video today. So normally you see me fixing stuff or doing mailbag videos or doing product reviews. So what you see is my jazz hands things going on. So today I want to have a little bit of discussion about the video which is going around right now. It's going quite viral in a way. At least it's in the electronics community. Um, Mendit Mark's video about a $25,000 preamp, which is a ridiculous price to start with, which he did a repair on and then got a, in my opinion, fraudulent copyright strike on. So all of this is my opinion, right? Just be clear about this. These are my thoughts. This is what I believe. Whether they're true, whether they're correct, make your own opinion on that. This is my opinion. So what Mendit Mark had shown in his video, which I will link down below because it's also still available on Odyssey. So I'll link down below in the description there to Mendit Mark's original video, which is on Odyssey still. So then you can see what all this fuss is all about. But you'll see that his video you probably have seen it. It's been uploaded multiple times by other YouTube channels. Now, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to discuss it. If you want to see it, you can see it. You've got plenty of opportunities to do it. Now, the main crux of this is that a repair that he did, and he had to do a lot of reverse engineering, things like that, to try and figure out the circuitry and, and establish what's going on, um, it got copyright strike. Now, in his video, in my opinion, which I watched, there was nothing in there copyrightable. It showed the casing, it showed the insides, it showed the circuit diagrams which he had written himself because he was reverse engineering it in order to figure out how to repair it because there was no repair information. There's nothing there to guide him about how to fix it. Lewis Rossman had also covered this particular video and this issue and it's going on, which is great of Lewis. One of the things Lewis said is that apparently the owner got quoted a lot of money just to fix it. Anyway, so Mendy Mark got received this thing. It was beaten up because the postage system hadn't been very good with it. And it was physically damaged as well. So obviously he had to deal with that. And he did. Did a good job on repair. And what he did in that video is something that any one of us electronics YouTube repair channels would do. Such as me. Even I would do this. Is sit down, pull it apart, figure out what's going on. Draw out some circuit diagrams as necessary to help the understanding. And figure out what its construction is like. And then trace the fault, repair it, patch it up, send it back. All right? I've done lots of videos repairing things, either electronics test gear, which do have service manuals most of the time, at least the older stuff I work on, now not so much, or other general consumer-grade type equipment as well. And consumer-grade, obviously, the quality is usually a lot lower because it's made down to a price, which is, you know, we expect. Now, in the video which Mark had done, he, I believe rightly, expressed concern about the build quality of this very expensive device. So, that, as I said before, the video got taken down for copyright. The manufacturers of the device lodged a copyright claim against it. I was clicking change to a top view here to show you the screen. Here we go. So, there's lots of YouTube channels have been re-uploading this video, as you can see here. There's loads of them, there's Lewis Rossman covering it as well, that's his opinion. So, lots of people have been covering this, and I believe it's important enough that I should cover this too. Now, my audience is nowhere near as big as some of these other channels, but as a repair channel, this concerns me, because as someone that takes apart equipment, does videos repairing it, not breaching any copyright, someone could equally do this to me. Or any other one of these other YouTube channels which do repairs. That could happen to them too. To me, this is a big issue. This is censorship. Because we should be able to show what we are doing. We are just doing a repair. We are not doing anything scandalous. There's nothing there to like infringe on anyone's rights. All it's doing is fixing a piece of equipment. My opinion about the actual equipment itself is that, well, it's horrendously overpriced. The build quality is not looking great because it's using things like plastic standoffs. Now, there may be a technical reason for using plastic standoffs. Okay, so there may be actual a real reason for that. It could be purely because they need plastic ones to separate the board so there's no electrical connection between the two to prevent ground loops and that kind of thing. So there could be legitimate reason for using those standoffs. But it could have still been done better, in my opinion. And the other thing is it's got loads of tantalum capacitors in there. 
That's where this shirt I'm wearing is really relevant because it's always a capacitor. Well, almost always. 90% of the time, it's a bad capacitor. Now, that's a bit of a spoiler alert for you. In Mark's video, he tracks it all down, reverse engineers, figures it out how it works, he even explains how it works because he's figured it out. And a lot of it's based off original manufactured data sheets from the componentry, the op amps and so on. You get a standard example diagram of how the circuit should work, and some of it is based on that. Not copyrightable. It's just generic circuit design. Nothing particularly special there. The fact that you use tantalum capacitors right through the unit. Now, in a way, that's a good thing because they're actually expensive capacitors, right? They are much more expensive than electrolytics or ceramics. So it does show that a attention to detail and a an effort has been made by the manufacturer to use good quality parts, right? So th there is that. Now, one bad part of it, though, is that they've done things like scrape off component markings so you can't see what the components are. Obviously, they're paranoid about someone copying their circuitry, which I can kind of understand, especially when you're selling a device for £25,000, um, which is a bit ridiculous, in my opinion. From what I saw, as far as its construction design goes, it's not worth £25,000. It's certainly got a lot of value in it, in parts, but uh, yes, it's... Not yeah, don't buy it. So yeah, don't buy it. Um, and the attitude of the manufacturer that said a lot more than the actual product itself. So the fact they took down that video to try and silence Mark about a, a simple repair video. Capacitors go bad. They go bad all the time. That's why I have this shirt. It's not a big deal. It, stuff goes wrong. The damage to the unit which he received wasn't the manufacturer's fault that is the postal system's fault but the build quality wasn't really robust enough to handle shipping so you know it's a bit of some's manufacturer some's postal system the postal system was careful the device wouldn't have been broken but equally if it had been made more robustly it also wouldn't have broken so yeah I mean I don't know but anyway I just want to put a little video out there saying, look, check out the Minute Bank's video down below in the description there. My opinion is that what the manufacturer has done is pretty apparent. Yeah, it's just not good. You know, repair channels need to stick together. If someone's trying to abuse their abilities and take down videos which should not be taken down, then we should stick together and help each other out there. You know, I'm a much smaller channel than Mark. But, I still have an audience. And so, to find out the brand of, of the unit, and all more about it, check out Mark's video. Mark's also done a subsequent video about the takedown. And actually, his follow-up video is quite good. You can almost barely tell the difference between the bill qualities. <laughs> anyway, it's always a capacitor. And... I just can't believe a manufacturer tried to take down a repair video. Obviously, they're embarrassed by their product. They must be embarrassed by it, because why else would you not want people to see it? Catch you later.